Hey guys, it's Dr. Ben Junkin. Welcome to Friday of the third week of online learning. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Today, today we're going to be reviewing Riemann sums, area under curves, integrals, definite integrals, use substitution, lots of stuff to review today. Uh, so I've got four different example problems for us to go through here. Let's start with Riemann sums. So Riemann sums generally are given us to us via a table like this, and we want to approximate the integral of a function using its table. So if I want to approximate the integral of p prime of t dt, where I'm given p prime here in my function, or in my table, I want to integrate from 10 to 40, and I'm going from 10 to 40 in my table, great. And I want to use a left Riemann sum, which means that when I'm making these rectangles, I want to choose the left height of my rectangle. So I'm not actually going to draw out the rectangles. I'm going to go ahead and just use the table the way it is. What I need is, first off, the distance between all of my different intervals. So from 10 to 20, there's a distance of 10. From 20 to 30, there's a distance of 10. And from 30 to 40, there's also a distance of 10. So it's going to tell me the width of the rectangle at the bottom of, um, the, bottom of the rectangle. And then I want to know the height of the rectangle. And the key word here is I'm looking at the left heights, and I'm using the three subintervals. So I'm only going to use the height at 10, 20, and 30, because I'm looking at the left-hand side. I'm not going to use the height here at 40, because that would be too far to the right. So if I want to integrate then, or approximate the integral from 10 to 40 of p prime of t dt, well, that's going to be the sum of all the rectangles. So the base of the rectangle from 10 to 20 is a uh, width of 10, and it has a height of 4. So I'm taking my width and multiplying to the left by the height on the left. Plus, again, 10 as my width times a height of negative 2. This one's going to give me negative definite integral area. Plus, 10 times the height of 0. These 10s turned out to be perfectly even. You may not in the future get exact even intervals like this. So make sure that you're always checking the width of each interval. It may not always be the same. So this is pretty easy. I can do this in my head. 40 minus 20 plus 0. So this it gives me an integral of 20. What are the units on this? Well, my p prime or my heights are in feet per minute. So I'm multiplying feet per minute or feet over minute. And I'm multiplying by the 10 here, which is the distance or which is a minute category. So I look at minutes that I'm being multiplied by. And I multiply feet per minute times minutes. Minutes cancel. And so this answer should come out in feet. So if I multiply feet per minute times minutes, I should get just feet here. Cool. Let's talk about area under curves and integral interpretations using a graph instead of a table. So I want to find these three different definite integrals using this graph here. Remember, the area, the, the, what this integral represents is just the area between the curve and the x-axis. So if I want to go, if I want to find the area from 0 to 4 of f of x dx, I'm going from here to here. So I really want the area of this semicircle right here. OK. Well, this is a half circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So if I need to, area of a circle is pi r squared. I only want half of it, though. So I want 1 half times pi r squared, and the r, the radius of this circle, is 2. One thing to note here is because this semicircle is underneath the x-axis, this definite integral value is going to be negative. So I'm going to put that as a key here. Note or remember that it's negative if below x-axis. So remind yourself, it's negative it's below the x-axis. So I put a negative here, 1 half times pi times 2 squared. Well, that's just going to be negative 2 pi. The integral from negative 2 to 6 of f of x dx. So I want to go now from here 
all the way to here. Okay. So I already have this integral from zero to four, so I'm gonna use that automatically. And I just have to add up these two extra pieces. So for this triangle on the left-hand side, from negative six, or sorry, negative two to zero, that is above the x-axis. So I'm gonna take a positive area of a triangle, area of a triangle being one half base times height. So one half, my base is two, my height is three. Base is two, height is three. Minus two pi, because I'm gonna be adding this area, but this area is negative. So negative two pi, or the definite integral of this is negative. And then minus, again, because this is below the x-axis, this triangle, one half, a base of two, a height of two. Base of two, height of two. The one halves and the twos cancel, so I should get three minus two, which is one minus two pi. So my answer here should be one minus two pi. Again, the negative two pi I just took from what I had already done. I don't want to do the work again. Uh, lastly, I've got the integral from four to negative four of f of x dx. This is going backwards. You can see that my lower limit of integration, my lower number here, four, is greater than this one, negative four. I don't like dealing with that. So what I do is I put a negative out front in order to flip the limits of integration. So remind yourself that if you have limits of integration that are in the wrong order, you're not going from lower to higher, you can, put a, you can swap them if you put a negative out front. So you, may, you need to make sure you put a negative out front and now it looks just like a giant blob. It is a negative out front. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this negative out front and I need the integral from negative four from all the way here, all the way here to four. So I need this whole triangle now plus this semicircle. Well, this whole triangle, it's above the x-axis. So I'm gonna say it's one half, it's positive. Base, which is now one, two, three, four. So base of four, a height of three, still one, two, three here in the center. And the integral, the area of this semicircle, we already found that integral was negative two pi. If I reduce this, you should get positive two pi minus six. And I'll move it up a little bit. So we get positive two pi minus six for the definite integral here. Cool. Let's do basic integration and then some use substitution stuff to wrap up. So for basic integration, oh, let's make sure we're all on the camera. Great. Basic integration, I put your rule up here, the power rule. Uh, when you integrate x to the n dx, you add one to the power, you divide by that new power, and you add a plus c if there's no limits of integration. When we have limits of integration, we're gonna plug those numbers in and we'll see that in this first example. Cool. So if I wanna integrate three x squared plus five x minus two from negative two to two, do this integral. The first thing I need is I need to find the antiderivative of this polynomial here using the rule up here at the top. So I have three times x to the two plus one power or three over three. I added one to the power divided by that new power of three, plus five comes along for the ride, x to the one plus one power or two over two, minus two, there's no x, that's kind of like x to the zero power, so I want to say x to the first power over one, or just add the x there. For the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus then, I just need to evaluate this at two, and negative two and subtract. So now it just comes down to, can I plug this into my calculator? So the threes are gonna cancel here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Two cubed plus five halves times two squared minus two times two. And then I wanna subtract everything evaluated at the bottom limit. And that means I'm subtracting all of the terms. So I gotta like put them in parentheses just so I'm super careful here. Negative two cubed 
plus 5 halves negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2. And all of that is in my parentheses here. Just to make sure, because you can use our calculator for this, but just to make sure that you're putting it in your calculator correctly, you should get 8 plus 10 minus 4 minus negative 8 plus 10 plus 4, which gives you 8. You add all those together. The key again is that this negative sign is for all of these terms. So negative 8 plus 10 plus 4 is uh, negative is 6, and then it becomes negative 6. Cool. Uh, this one, I wanted to show us the kind of wonky integrals now. This one doesn't use the rule at the top. The integral of e to the x plus 5 over x. This uses two different rules that we want to remember. The integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x plus some constant. Again, because I don't have any limits of integration, so I always add a plus c. And it also uses the fact that the integral of 1 over x dx equals natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So those are two extra little fun rules. But then this integral becomes really easy. So this integral then is, well, the integral of e to the x, you already say it's just e to the x itself. So e to the x. I'm not going to add plus c because these are both going to have a plus c. I'm just going to put it all at this, uh, the end. Plus, I don't have just 1 over x. I have 5 over x. But 5 over x is just the same as 5 times 1 over x. So this is just 5 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then I add my plus c here at the end. Cool. And then lastly, the u sub, the fun, difficult, hard, loved ones. So for u substitution, what we're doing is we're looking for a function and its derivative in the same problem. So if I can find, oops, move down a little. If I can find a function and its derivative in the same problem, great. And then my key is that u is always trapped inside something. So u is always trapped inside something. That could be like a power, like a square. That could be a radical, etc. It's usually trapped inside something. OK, so for this function, integral of 15x to the fourth times negative 3x to the fifth minus 1, all to the fifth power. Ooh. OK, well, if I want to figure out my, what my u should be here, I see that I have something that is trapped inside a power all this stuff to the fifth power, that's what I want my u to be. Negative 3x to the fifth minus 1. Not the power, just the u stuff. So I'm not going to say this to the fifth power. The u is just the stuff inside the power. And then I want the derivative. So du is, if I take the derivative of negative 3x to the fifth, I get negative 15x to the fourth. The derivative of negative 1 is 0. This would have been du over dx, but I always move the dx to the other side. So du equals negative 15x to the fourth dx. And I want to see if this is still my problem. Well, I see 15x to the fourth and dx, but this negative is an issue. So the negative is an issue. What I have to do then is I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 to move it over here. So negative du is equal to 15x to the fourth dx. So now I see exactly what I have in my problem, 15x to the fourth times dx. I'm going to now rewrite this entire integral in terms of u. So I have the integral of... This stuff is u to the fifth, u to the fifth, and 15x to the fourth dx is negative du. 
which I'm just going to rewrite as negative integral of u to the fifth du. But I can't stop there. I have to actually integrate now. But this is a super easy integral we can do with the power rule. I'm just going to need to take that negative. I have u to the sixth power over six, because I'm using the power rule, adding one to the power, dividing by it, plus c. The last thing we have to make sure we do is go ahead and put back our u. So I'm going to put the negative 1 sixth out front. And our u, remind yourself all the way back up here at the top, was negative 3x to the fifth minus 1. So negative 3x to the fifth minus 1 to the sixth power plus c. Great, fun. Let's finish up with the trig one. This is the fun, tricky one. Cool. Okay, so I see some limits of integration. I see sines, I see cosines, gross. I see that sine is being trapped inside a power because sine is cubed, sine of two x cubed or sine cubed of two x. So my u here is gonna be the sine of two x. Again, I just take the stuff that's trapped inside the power, not the actual uh, stuff, not the, not the sine cube. So just sine of 2x. And so I should get du equals, the derivative of sine is cosine of 2x. But then I also need to multiply by the derivative of 2x using the chain rule, which is just 2. Funky 2. Why not change it up? OK, so I got du equals 2 cosine 2x sine 2x for u. So this is going to be my u cubed, but my cosine 2x dx, I've got this extra factor of 2, so i got to divide it out. So if I divide both sides by 2, I get 1 half du is cosine of 2x. I move the 2 to the other side. The trick for this one is since I actually want a number here, I need to actually flip my limits of integration from x to u. My limits were x equals 0 and x equals pi over 4. But now I need to plug it into u to find what that is. So when x equals 0, if I plug it into this equation here, this is u would be sine of 2 times 0. And sine of 0 is just 0. If I plug in pi over 4 for x, I would get sine of 2 times pi over 4. That's sine of pi over 2, which is going to give me 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite this then. So what I get is the integral no longer from 0 to pi over 4, but from 0 to 1. Make sure you're doing the right order. 0 to pi over 4, 0 to 1. Great. Of I've got sine cubed 2x, which is u cubed. But then my cosine 2x dx is 1 half du. Clean that up a little bit. 0 to 1, put the 1 half out front, u cubed du. And now this should be super easy to evaluate. The 1 half is going to come along. And then I get the integral of u cubed, which is just u to the fourth over 4, evaluated at 1 and 0. So what I do then is 1 half, uh, if I evaluate u to the fourth over 4 with 1, I get 1 fourth. If I evaluate it at 0, I subtract 0 over 4, but that's just going to go away. So I don't care about that. My answer is then just 1 eighth. Great. Fantastic. So I know that was a lot to review. I would recommend watching the video again, pausing, taking notes, etc. cetera. Uh, if you have questions, I'm online from 9.30 to 11.30 today. I'll also be live in office hours from 2.45 to 3.45. Hope to see you there. If I don't, have a good weekend, and I'll see you next Wednesday for more calculus review. We're getting close to the online AP test. I'll put more um, information about that uh, next week so we can get ready for that. But whew, we're reviewing a lot of stuff. We're getting close. We're almost there.
Uh, have a good weekend, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.